Welcome back to Sales Insights with Sarah. This is the podcast for sales professionals and business leaders looking to implement new strategies and drive sales growth in their organizations. I'm your host, Sarah Downs, and my guests and I will be sharing with you some of our own experiences in business and sales insights to help you gain focus and take action. Hi everyone and welcome back to the Sales Insights with Sarah podcast. So today I am going to speak about selling for startups. So I know there are a number of startup founders and entrepreneurs or people that are employed that are thinking about doing their own thing and that are subscribed and listening to this podcast. So I thought it would hopefully um, add some value if I could share with you some things to think about Um, when it comes to sales and selling as a startup company. So for many startups and most of the ones that I've personally worked with over the years, it's been quite a terrifying prospect um, for some of the startup founders. But also, you know, it's an absolute must for any business to succeed and grow. You know, we are in business because we are selling something. um, and We have something that other people want. So no matter how terrified you are of sales, it's something that we need to be able to understand and potentially do ourselves as startup founders until we have the either investment or the revenue to um, give us the opportunity to bring somebody else into the team um, to take on that responsibility. So let's talk about, um, first of all, the founders. So why do many why do some founders find it a terrifying prospect? So I think sometimes it's terrifying because it's very much the unknown. Um, or a founder of a business could be technical, operational, and not actually have a huge commercial understanding or commercial background. But also when you're the founder, you know, you're busy, you're stretched, you're wearing multiple hats. Um, so it can be quite difficult to prioritize sales and give it the time that it really needs to work. And also you could have have investors, um, you know, expecting returns by a certain point in time. And that can put huge amount of pressure onto founders when it comes to sales and revenue growth. So I think the first thing we need to be as founders is self-aware. We need to understand our own um, capabilities. We need to understand, you know, what are we going to be strong at? What do we maybe need some help with? Maybe we need to train or coached on. Even if we're having to do the selling, maybe it's something we need supported on. Um, how much time can we give it? Is there something else that we are doing that we maybe don't need to be doing so that we can free up more time for sales? Um, having a really good understanding of what their investor's expectation is, if there is investors involved or even other shareholders potentially. Um, and how are you going to work together as a team or even one person? You know, how are you going to make this happen? So to be successful in sales, we really need to make it a priority in any business. And it's far too easy for any founder to make excuses on, oh, I had to do, um, you know, the T's and C's. We we had to do um, something in the R&D. We had to do something operational. But at the end of the day, if you don't sell anything, you're not going to need T's and C's. You know, you're not going to need operational teams because there's going to be no customers to do this for. So we really need to, to make time um, to pr- and prioritize our selling efforts as a business. And we need to understand who the buyer is. Now, this is something that when I'm working with startups, I find they really struggle with because at the time of starting up, you know, you're excited about your product, your service. You feel like, you know, you know, you're going in for world domination. And when I say, you know, which sector are you going after? I get answers like we can work in any sector. We can work with every company. Our market share is ginormous. 
Now that's all well and good and it may be true, but right now you do not have the resources for that. So you need to focus, you need to understand exactly who your buyer personas are. You will need to do enough research to understand where that low hanging fruit is so that you know exactly um, who you're targeting and that if you try and offer something to everyone, you're offering nothing to everyone, if that makes sense, because you're just not going to have that capacity and resource to go after the world domination from day one, unfortunately. Um, so we need to understand the buyer. We also need to understand what our value proposition is for that buyer persona or those buyer personas, if there's more than one. Because if you're working cross sector, you're working cross region, um, you maybe have different products and different services, then I can assure you, you will have more than one value proposition as a business. And you need to be super clear on what that is so that you can um, get attention from your prospects prospects um, quickly. And you can start qualifying out these businesses quickly. So you're only spending your precious time and energy um, on companies that are, are worth it, especially right at the start. You also need to understand how you're going to speak to these businesses. You know, what platforms are you going to use? How are you going to meet them? Where are you going to meet them? Um, what's your sales process? And that's something that I understand when you're a startup. It's, it's like written on the back of the fag packet, as most people say, or the beer mat. Um, you know, it's not until you really start um, implementing processes that you'll start to change them and adapt them and make them stronger and better and more suited for your organization. But you do need to start with something. There's far too many startups just winging it, just going out there and just doing whatever um, they feel at the time is the right thing to do. You know, we really need to start somewhere. So the how is very important. And then what I would say is focus and consistency is key. So we've already spoken about focus in the way of you can't do everything for everyone on day one. You need to focus and know exactly what you're going after and why. But also we need to focus as individuals. You know, if you give yourself set periods of time in a day or set days in a week to focus on sales, we really need to focus and we need to be consistent um, one, so that the marketplace is seeing that you're consistent, but also so that you can measure what's working and what's not working. If you're not being consistent, it's much harder to measure, for example, um, social media, how many people you're maybe directly reaching out to on calls. It's, it's really difficult. So you need to create a plan. You need a strategy in place. You need a process around that. You need to understand your KPIs and how to measure it. Now, I maybe feel like um, if anyone, founders or potential founders were scared at the start of um, this episode and feeling that, you know, sales was a terrifying prospect, with the amount of information I've given you within a few minutes, it may feel even um, more terrifying. But I can assure you that if you can follow these steps, it will make it so much easier and hopefully much more enjoyable for you. And please listen to some of the other episodes on the podcast because there will be content in there that is going to help you um, with some of these steps. So good luck to all those startup entrepreneurs um, and founders out there. I wish you all the very best with your businesses and hopefully you've taken away something in this episode that's going to help you on your journey. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Sales Insights with Sarah podcast. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already so that you are notified of every new episode. If you could take a few minutes to leave a review, it would be greatly appreciated. See you next time.